Diamonds of a girl's best friend A kiss may be grand But it won't help you pay the rent On that humble flat Or help you at the automat I wanna be loved by you And you and nobody else but you Are you ready to learn some tips and tricks On how to get this Marilyn Monroe makeup look? Well, I'm here to show you how if you go to my little blog, candyj.com, I'll put the link right up there. You can go and see where to get my fabulous jewels, my lovely gloves, and even this wonderful wig I've got on. My hair may be quite kind of little, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. A kiss may be grand, but it won't help you better rattle on that humble flat or help you at the automat. Well, hello, and welcome to Marilyn Monroe School of Makeup. I'm going to be your teacher, Miss Diamonds. Do you love my glasses? They make everything better, and I really feel like a teacher. Let's get your notebooks out and your pens, and let's get started on a glamorous adventure. And don't be forgetting my platinum wig. It's making my head so hot and sweaty, I really need to take it off. This is not Marilyn Monroe hair. I had to pop the lenses out of these glasses, you see. They were too reflective and you couldn't see my fabulous cat eye line that goes with my cat eye glasses. Aren't these wonderful? I think I'm going to start wearing them all the time. Do you think if we all do it, we'll start a trend? Somehow this look just isn't so sexy anymore with these glasses on now, is it? If you want to see the rest of these bloopers and outtakes, watch the end of the video. That's where they are. And just be warned, in the next scene I have no makeup on. Ah! So get all your screams and everything out now. It won't be that scary. Insert screaming. So the key to Marilyn Monroe's look is a very moisturized face and to use a good primer. I'm going to be using Urban Decay Complexion Primer Potion, and I'm going to apply that all over my face. Then, because this is a costume look, I'm going to apply Cover Effects. This is just their cream foundation and some Laura Mercier makeup in Sunny Bake. Now we're going to go over it with our concealer. This is actually cream foundation, but we're going to make it look a lot lighter with this. Now you want to use a light face powder or a translucent powder and set your makeup so powdered all over your face. Okay, so I did the shadow on one eye, now it's time to do this eye. And I'm going to show you a couple tricks that Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist, Whitey, did, which are amazing. Uh, pretty much it's just white with some brown contouring. So you can use any white, I'm just going to use these two white. This is Gesso from, from MAC, it's a matte color. And then this is Chill, it's a white frost. So I'm going to first take a fluffy brush and the white, and I'm going to put it underneath the eyebrow. And then slightly bring it down onto the lid. The most concentrated color being on this inner corner and starting down here. Now I'm going to take the frosty color and I'm going to go over that. Again, get this really white and light and in this inner corner as well. Now you can take a frosty off-white color, which I'm going to go find. This is from my Yabby palette. It's just a professional makeup artist line. I'm going to use this frosty kind of off-white beige and I'm going to place this right in the center this center inner corner of the eyelid and I'm going to put just a touch of that underneath the eyebrow right there. You want to make sure you get the frosty white color right here in the inner corner right there. Now I'm going to be mixing three browns to get the perfect brown contouring shade. I'm going to mix charcoal brown, cork, coquette. I'm going to mix those three, just a little, so I'm going to just touch on each of those. And we're going to get right into this crease. We want to shade this whole area around here. I'm going to take a little bit of these light colors and I'm going to go inside this inner crease and shade this area right up in here. Now, contrary to popular belief, Marilyn Monroe never really used black eyeliner. She used a brown or a very dark brown. And what they did then was they just wet a brush and they put it in the eyeshadow and they made kind of like a liquid liner out of eyeshadow and a wet brush. So I'm going to wet my angle brush, get a brown, and I'm going to show you how to do her special eye trick. 
So I just wet my brush a little bit and dried it off on a paper towel. I'm going to just put it into, this is espresso brown, any dark or medium brown will work. And the neat trick about Marilyn Monroe's eye trick is this line went almost straight up and then another line went almost, let me show you like this. It went flat like this and then down like this. So you kind of have like this little angled right there and then just this wing went out to the side. Now another trick they did to the corner of her eyes is they put a white pencil, which I'll show you right here, and you want this to go up the same degree as your eyelashes are kind of curling up, and then make this kind of triangle right there. I'm going to blend it with my fingertip. Oh, there was something black on my hand that got black all over my face. I'm going to put a little more right there. I'm going to blend it upwards so you kind of create this little white triangle shape right there, and just blend that a little. We're going to go back over that with a white shadow and kind of just pat over that. Oh, this polish totally chipped off. That looks horrible. Pretend you don't see my finger polish. Nail polish, finger polish. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to go back with our damp brush and our brown eyeshadow, and I'm going to draw these angled lines in. So we're going to go up right here. And then this little wing part is going to go right above the white triangle that we just did. I'm going to follow that line right back down. Now, another trick on top of that is they would take a little bit of a gold eyeshadow and they would go right on top of the brown liner. So I'm going to take, this is Woodwing from MAC, any gold or bronzy color will do. And I'm going to go right above that line that we put the brown just to soften it up and make it a little more light reflective. Now you can take the brown and underneath that white triangle that you just did, put a little bit of brown going down. That's going to make the eye look more open and doll-like and look like a shadow from the big heavy lashes that you have on top. And I'm going to touch down a little bit over here. See how you can see it looks like there's a shadow from these lashes, but it's just an illusion. Now next, a standard trick that everybody did back in those old Hollywood days is they put a white liner in the inner rim of their eyes to make it look more open and wide for the camera. So I'm just going to take a white liner, go in the inner rim, and give it a couple coats. You can go back over with a white eyeshadow and angle brush and kind of pack it in there so it'll stay on longer. Now Whitey Asher, who was her makeup artist from her very first test pictures of 20th Century Fox, up until actually doing her funeral makeup, did special tricks that sometimes he didn't even tell Marilyn what he was doing. One of these, he would take a red uh, lip liner or a red lipstick and put a tiny dot on the inner corner of the eye. Now what that would do is it would make the whites of the eyes look whiter and brighter. I'm going to show you how to do that. Cherry lip liner from MAC, and I'm going to go right in the very inner corner in the tear duct, right in there, and just give it a little wiggle. And you can barely notice, but that red instantly makes this pop a little more and look white. You can take a Q-tip and clean out any eye makeup that may have gotten into the corner. Do a little wiggle in there. And it makes the white of your eyes pop. Again, if um, people have allergies to red dye, uh, maybe that's not the best idea to do, but this was just the trick that he did. <laughs> so I'm passing that on to you guys. Now I'm going to put a couple layers of mascara on, and it's time for lashes. So we're back with just our mascara on, and now I'm going to show you how to put lashes on. Marilyn always used strip lashes, and what they would do a lot of the time is they would cut just the ends of the strip lashes off and just put them on the outer corner so it was like a demi-wispy lash. So I'm going to show you I have a pair that's already, they make them like that now so you don't have to cut the full strips, but if you have a full strip, just cut it in half and just put the ends on. Okay. So these are from Urban Decay. They're called Lure, I think. These are just the outer corners. The good thing about the Urban Decay is they come with a latex-free eyelash glue, which is very hard to find. You can watch my video on how to apply false lashes, so I won't waste time showing you that here. But I'll do that and be right back. We have our lashes on. Now I'm going to show you a couple contouring tricks um, that Whitey Asher, Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist, used. So they would contour some things that Marilyn didn't like about her face, like her wider forehead, um, her nose. She didn't like, it was kind of like bulbous on the end. So I'm going to take a contour and a flat brush. I got this from crownbrush.com. Or that's their website, it's just crown brush. Um, but I'm going to go underneath the cheekbone right here, on the temples, and the side of the forehead. 
Now I'm going to go in kind of a V-shape underneath the side of the nostrils, and that will make it look more angled and less kind of bulbous and round. This is her classic trick I do in a lot of um, other, it looks great for everybody's nose. And along the sides of the nose, they went down with the, with the shading, and you can see how it makes it look like a straight line. See how it looks straighter and longer? What they would also do is they would take a highlight, and sometimes they'd put Vaseline right here because the light would catch. They'd also do it above or under the eyebrow, in the corner of the eyes, in the outer corner, and above the cheeks because the Vaseline would catch the light and make it look like a natural highlight. Only for pictures. If you do that now, it'll just make a smeary mess of makeup all over your face. <laughs> now, Marilyn Monroe used a very peachy, corally kind of blush color. So I'm going to use this color, which is called Peaches. And we're just going to get a little bit on here. I'm going to even touch it with a little bit of pink so it softens it up. And we're going to go right above where we just went with the bronzer. And just kind of create this warm little scoop shape right here. Just to warm up the face just a little bit. Now we're going to do her lips, and I'm going to show you another trick that she used. We're going to take our good white pencil again, and we're going to go right above the Cupid's bow on the top lip. You're just going to blend that in. This is going to create another one of those highlighted looks. This is also something they would put the Vaseline on the top lip to give it a real highlighted look. Now I'm going to take our red lip liner. I'm going to be using Cherry. It's just a lip liner from MAC, any red will work. And I'm going to show you the exaggerated line because it definitely went outside of her lip line. This kind of came out and went wider, and I will show you just to make this top lip look a little more voluptuous. I'm going to be using a very blue red lip color. Uh, back then the cameras that they use tend to make the reds look very orangey, so her makeup artist used you know, many five different shades of very bluish reds to get that same red lip color. So I'm just going to show you how we're going to draw outside the lip line to get her particular that pin-up look that was very classic of that era for making lips look kind of very overdrawn. Now you can take a lip brush, which is how we always line her lips. Go to my blog and I'll put links to all those. Maryland lips are all done. So I'm going to show you with a very light highlighter, which they did use. This is Silver Dust from MAC. It's a really light color. Anytime you use this brush, it's going to be great for highlighting. So this is from Crown Brush again. It's just these one with the little white tips because it gives you a lighter application. So her highlight areas were down the center of the nose. Again, because she wanted that elongated look. Right here above the cheeks this T-zone right in between the eyebrows and above the eyebrows, and right here under the chin. And that was Marilyn Monroe's highlight area. You can even take the highlighter and a little bit of your eyeshadow brush and go back over the front area and the inner corner and underneath the brow bone to get a little extra pop of highlight too. Now, last but not least, we can't forget her eyebrows. She had very sharp pointed eyebrows because she thought her eyebrow was wide and the pointed shape helped draw it together. So I'm going to show you how we get her crazy eyebrows. I'm going to use a brown because my hair is pretty dark. I'm going to use cork, this light brown. for our finishing touch and show you what it looks like. I almost forgot her trademark beauty mark. Where do we want it? Right about here. Now we're done with our look. Although this wig said it was for Marilyn Monroe, I think this is more like Madonna or an 80s valley girl. Should have totally been a cheerleader and like um, maybe if I would have had braces, this would have been my dream hair in the 80s. I wanted hair cut like this, kind of asymmetrical on the front and heavier on one side. And I wanted to have braces so bad and wear like a cheerleading outfit to school. Unfortunately, my hair was like 1,000 shades darker than this and really long. And my mom never would have let me cut it. And I had semi-straight teeth, so I never got to have braces. In a sultry, airy voice that's like this. It kind of sounds like Ginger from Gilligan's Island. 
You get a free pair of cardboard hands when you buy these red gloves. Once, I've told you a thousand times, get your clammy cardboard hands off me. Well, of course, gentlemen prefer blondes. I'll have a few things to say about that when I take my wig off. Whoa, look how crazy it looks with my dark hair.